you find out that uh, you wake up the next day and this lever goes to the bar, definitely do a bleed. Too much air is in the system. Also, another good uh, test or indicator to make sure that um, your system is bubble free or air free. You want to hang it up with the front wheel up in the air so that the, sh the lever is going to be up in the air, hanging like that. And if you walk out the next day and the lever, you hit the lever and the lever goes all the way to the handlebar, definitely got air in the system. Definitely do a bleed. Don't put that off. Um, but that's a good indication of what's going on. It's okay to do that, it's okay to hang it that way. It's not gonna cause any problems, it's just gonna expose any possible uh, problems that may be in the system, but sooner than later. All right, so we're gonna do the same thing to the other side. We're gonna top off this reservoir. So we're gonna level out our lever. Reservoir screws up here, we're gonna unscrew that, make sure we're somewhat level. Snug that up. Got our 2.5 Allen tool, break that free. And I got the ball in on the other side, so we're gonna do a quick spin off of this. And again, watch for that black O-ring. It's right there on the edge of my screw. Sometimes it gets left inside there. Um, doesn't matter, just as long as we know where it's at and we didn't lose it. And taking a peek inside there, we're pretty dry. So what we're gonna go ahead and do, we're gonna top this off. This is something I haven't seen in the directions, um, but it's certainly not gonna hurt. Um, the, the system should be full of, of fluid all the way to the top, so when you put your bleed screw back on, you should actually be pushing fluid out, which means you're also pushing air out, completely sealing off the system. So we're gonna put some fluid in there. And we're using mineral, Shimano mineral fluid. Comes uh, pink and I'm using a syringe here. And you wanna continue to drop these until you have fluid all the way to the top and have it just, just slightly pouring out. So what this is doing is we're filling any voids, pushing all the air out, putting fluid in its place. So just like that, we got fluid sitting right on top there which is fine, we're gonna have a little bit of spillage. So when you go to put your bleed screw back on, my little O-ring fell off, so I'm gonna put that O-ring back onto my screw. Be real conscious of where this is at, it's gonna help form a seal. So you can either come back with your fingertips and drop that in, make sure your, your gloves aren't sitting too loose. You can also put the bolt on with your tool. So here's my tool, either end, I'm gonna use this longer end, put the, the screw on this end, I'm gonna hold it with my finger, I'm going to come upside down. And we got some spillage on my side, which is totally fine. This is actually what we want. Making sure we're pushing all air out. Get that snug. And then we're going to just snug it up a little bit more. This does not have to be crazy tight. The smaller the screw, the less torque we use. All right, go ahead and spray down your lever anywhere you think you got some spillage. And just do a quick wipe off. What's nice about this isopropyl alcohol, it's gonna dry up pretty quick. So <clears throat> if it lands on that mineral oil, it's gonna try and try and evaporate it as well. A little bit. Okay. So we're gonna do a test. We're gonna squeeze this lever. That's pretty good. I'm gonna go ahead and tilt that back down. Now when you tighten up this brake lever, and this goes for shifters as well, don't over tighten them. The torque setting is probably anywhere from six to nine newton meters. Um, some people like to keep them slightly loose, so not so loose that you can come up and hit it and it moves, but if you do crash, it's going to slide and move rather than breaking a part of your, your brake lever. I've had that happen. So it's kind of finding that happy medium, so definitely not too loose. When in doubt, just tighten it up. So it doesn't move, tighten up to the proper torque setting. But that was just a little insider information. All right, so here we go and hit that lever. So right there it stops. Show you that again. So right there the pads made contact with the rotor. Just do, squeezing it real gentle, that's perfect. If the lever came in all the way and hit the handlebar, that would be a problem. That would mean that you have air in the system and it's time for a bleed or if you have a leak somewhere else. So definitely inspect your line all the way from lever, all the way to your caliper. Make sure there's no wetness or dripping anywhere. But this feels standard Shimano, which, which I like. All right, this is usually the best spot where I like to adjust my shifters, adjust my levers. 
I can get my hands on it, make sure angle's correct, the distance, whether we need to come in or out are correct. Definitely just want them to match. So usually we're at a ballpark, get you in a 45 degree angle. Um, other than that, it's personal preference. And again, not too tight, probably looking around six, seven newton meters. When I give them a try, I use my fingers and wrist to try and see if that lever wants to shift up. Not 100% force, but a decent amount. And they're not moving, so that's pretty good. And we check them, and then take it for a test drive. Cruise around the driveway first, then maybe the street. Kind of squeeze those brakes somewhat hard to make sure that the, the bolts are tight, the, and then the hoses aren't gonna pop out or there's no leakage or anything like that, so. Good to go.